What's up, good people? Welcome back to Stock Up with Larry Jones. If you are new to the page, hit the like, subscribe. Most importantly, that notification bell. Hey, family, you guys know what to do. Hit that like button. Let's keep it going. Hey, you guys know that this is uh, brought to you by Mumu. Deposit the second link below, get 15 free stock. And then uh, the top link will be Stock Up You, Stock Up University. Learn more, earn more. Come join the family, learn how to make money with these markets, okay? Let's go right into uh, what's happening today. Um, of course, if we look at uh, what or who has been reporting already, as we could see on yesterday, we had Google and Microsoft, okay? The battle of AI. Google and Microsoft or Alphabet and Microsoft. Of course, most importantly, also to McDonald's. OK, McDonald's. And uh, so you got McDonald's. You know, some people say McDonald's versus Chipotle and Chipotle has been killing it like like I suggested that they would. Uh, they've just been a uh, well run machine. Chipotle has. They've adopted to the new way on delivery, they've optimized, they got ready, and they are ahead of the curve uh, as far as food is concerned, fast food, okay? So let's look at what is going on. My question to you now is, now that we see some of the, the big tech that reported, as a matter of fact, let's go right to it. Some of the big tech that reported on yesterday, look at that. Microsoft is killing it. Microsoft is up more than 8%, right? Up $22, okay? And then we had Alphabet is up a point and a half. Let's just say a point. So they both, if you look at the earnings on both of them, they both actually did very well. Microsoft did better than Google because Microsoft is further down the road with the AI race. We know that Google made a big, uh, a big mistake earlier uh, in the year when they tried to show, they, they came out prematurely on their AI and they showed how ill-prepared they really were. And Microsoft was showing how further down the road that they are. I believe that Google has the most growth in that area but Google is losing revenue uh, um, and they, they're, us they're losing revenue in um, advertisement, in particularly <laughs> uh, YouTube, okay? So we need you advertisers to pay, you know, come on back to Google and, <laughs> and advertise so we can have a platform because you guys are watching me on YouTube, which is owned by Google, all right? So... Um, let's look at what's going on right now. And then I have a question to ask you guys as I try to get a voice. All right, Meta. So we got Meta and Amazon yet to report. And as you can see, uh, starting from the 24th, I like to look at trends. Starting from the 24th, they've been cooling off, cooling off, cooling off, right? And then today, look at what happens. Bam, they both pop up. Why did they pop up? They popped up because Google and Microsoft did. Uh, Apple, I'm sorry, Alphabet. Yeah, Google and Microsoft did. That's why they popped up. And that's the only reason why they popped up because they haven't uh, reported yet, right? So remember on yesterday's video, uh, I want everybody to watch yesterday's video. I'm gonna leave it in the link to your upper right. I want you guys to watch it because there's a lot to learn. Now, it is not a um, an exact science, but it gives you guys clues on how to look for opportunity and how to potentially make money based on earnings, okay? So there's a lot in there. I want you guys to watch it. Um, there's some editing and it had some, it had some troubles launching. Uh, but I do think that most people need to watch that video. Let's keep it going, okay? So here's what I want to talk about. And I believe that I'm going to be on live for earnings uh, this evening, okay? Here's what I want to talk about. Where are we now? Where are we now? Are we going into a earnings recession? So far, it doesn't seem like it. 
so far, these companies actually have performed well, especially in comparisons to what uh, was expected, okay? Especially by these big time analysts, what was expected. So it's doing well. But does that mean that the deeper recession is not coming because I believe we're in a rolling recession? Does it really mean that? You leave me a comment. What does this mean, right? Now, we still have earnings going on, right? Just a third, which is a big chunk of the S&P reports this week, okay? And then we, we go into next week, right? And we will see after all is said and done what the real deal is. By the way, at the time of this re uh, recording, First Republic has been halted. Uh, it has tanked. First Republic has tanked. Hopefully, and I want you guys to watch this video. If you would watched my video, you would have averted it. Not only would you have averted First Republic tanking, you would have made a lot of money off of First Republic had you watched my Friday video and my Monday video Monday morning before they reported, right? So now, I want you guys to listen to this because it sheds a light on, are we in purgatory? Purgatory is worse. Than, <laughs> purgatory is worse because you're just held in a pattern. You're, you're, you're held in a trading pattern, right? And so the question is, um, was October the lows? Was October the lows is the worst over? You guys do know that stocks will rebound before the recession is over, right? Stocks generally, equities generally find their bottom before. And I've said that over and over before. And so that's why you can't time it. That's why at some point you got to get in. Myself and people that are following the Larry Jones $5 a day challenge, we've been dollar cost averaging all the way through because no one knows where the bottom is and no one knows where the top is. So let's give a listen uh, to these gentlemen. Not necessarily the calm before the storm. Which camp, though, do you find more persuasive now tactically in terms of the bullish case or the bear? It seems like the bear camp is more persuasive simply because we've got de debt ceiling negotiations going on. You have all of the different triggers lined up for a so-called recession. But then on the flip side, you have to ask yourself, did the pandemic distort a lot? Of course it did. Did it distort the numbers that you would normally see? Of course it did. Is it giving people time with a little bit more excess savings? Yes. So how do you balance that equation with the fact that you're still seeing that all the different triggers you normally look at are signaling a recession. And I just simply say that, OK, maybe it's different this time, but and but maybe collectively it's a rolling recession yeah. and you don't get this massive system wide one. And it's more shallow than people think. And earnings can recover next year. So, you know, both sides yeah. of the fence are there. Right. And if you get some belief that earnings could recover next year, uh, June is, you know, <laughs> right around the corner. And that's when people start theoretically pricing off of uh, off of the following year's earnings. You did mention that you got some decent yields at the front end of the curve so you can stay. So you guys heard it. Rolling recession. You've heard me say that over and over and over again. And um, I agree with this gentleman. It's hard to tell. And I do believe that we're in a rolling recession, meaning that we could be in a recession. And, and for instance, you can be in a recession with equities or stock, but the jobs still be uh, good, right? And then what happens is eventually the jobs will catch up, right? Autos will catch up. Banking with the credit squeeze, credit, credit tightening, companies not being able to make get loans, massive layoffs. Those things don't have to all happen at one time. They can be happening in different sectors. And that's what's known as a rolling recession. And uh, so it's harder to tell when it is happening, when the recession is happening like that. To me, a rolling recession is more dangerous because people will sometimes go all the way in. So was October the lows? Was, was that the bottom? No one knows. I really don't know. And uh, no one could say for sure. My question to you is, what are you doing to uh, prepare for it? What are you doing? Right. What do you see and what do you think 
is the bottom? Have we hit the bottom already? Or is the bottom yet to come, all right? Because even myself, all I could do is really make a plan, speculate, make a plan, and uh, go after the plan. Let's take a look at crypto at the time of recording this. Crypto is coming back very strong, as you can see. Bitcoin had dipped down to 27, 27-ish, and I start to buy more. Look at Ethereum is up, Solana's up. Look at that, Matic, my, my baby Matic is up. Look at that, soon to be 10% and Cardano is up, okay? And so that's why I do what? I DCA, dollar cost average, all right? Hey, good people, don't forget, get your 15 free stock time is running out. Second link below, deposit, make a deposit. Based on your deposit, you can get up to 15 free stock worth thousands of dollars. And then, of course, stock up you, stock up university. If you have been trading um, since COVID, you need to take the class. It is one of the cheapest classes out there, especially for the multitude of what you get. Now, I'm going to try to go uh, probably live on earnings tonight. And so be on the watch out, be on the lookout, okay? And uh, we'll see you probably tonight, all right? Live, love, laugh, learn, and earn.